Hi there. I'd like to share some brief words of Torah with you about this week's Parsha, Parshat Devarim. Parshat Devarim, or Sefer Devarim, the last book of the five books of Moshe, otherwise known as the last will and testament of Moshe Rabbeinu. In this week's Parsha, Moshe says to the Jewish people, look, take a look, take a step back, think about where you've come from, think about where you're headed, and think about where you are today. Where you are today is Hashem hereby Eschem. Hashem has made you so numerous. There are so many of you. Not only that, the promise that God guaranteed the forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, namely that his children will be, that their children will be, as numerous as the stars in the heaven, look around today, look how much each one of you shines. One of the obvious questions is that the Jewish people at no time in history have ever been as numerous as the stars in the heavens. I dare say that humanity altogether throughout history has never been as numerous as the stars in the heaven, for there are billions and billions of stars. So what exactly is meant by the promise, both in this instance as well as in two other cases? For every single time that God promises the forefathers that the Jewish people will be many, he uses different metaphors. Sometimes God says, I'll make them as many as the sand that lays by the sea. Sometimes God says, as we mentioned, as bright, as shiny, or really just as many as the stars of the heaven. And finally, and the one that we're going to focus on is, the Jewish people will be so numerous, it will be like the dust of the earth. And the question is, is this literal? What exactly is happening? What exactly is Hashem promising? And the answer is really a very, very simple one. And that is that each time God is just using a metaphor to describe a quality of the Jewish people. When God talks about a beautiful star, what is he doing? He's describing the nature of every single Jewish person to be important and essential, just as every star is important and essential. Just as every star shines bright, every single person, every single Jewish person shines bright in the grand scheme of things. Like the sand of the sea, the sand calls to mind the fact that when you unify many grains of sand together, they become strong enough and beautiful enough to hold back an ocean. Similarly, the Jewish people, with a collective purpose in mind, when acting in unity, they're strong enough to allow room for humanity to grow and flourish. And finally, as I mentioned, the one we're going to focus on, and that is the dust of the earth. Why the dust of the earth has a double connotation, both a negative connotation as well as a positive connotation. Rabbi Nebuchadnezzar, an early commentator, one from whom I often quote, explains that on the one hand, the Jewish people are going to be trampled upon. Look at Jewish history. We've been trampled, on, trampled upon over and over again. And yet we're still here. And that's why we're compared to the dust of the earth, for the dust is trampled upon. But the nature of dust, no matter how much one tramples upon it is, that at the end of the day, the dust arises and covers the coat, the cloak, the pants, the shoes of the traveler. That no matter how much the dust is trampled upon, it eventually comes out in a certain sense on top. Similarly, the Jewish people. We are only a few days away from Tisha B'Av. Tisha B'Av, the terrible day in our history in which we commemorate the awful tragedies. It's the ultimate Yom HaShoah. The awful tragedies that have happened to us throughout the generations. But we must remember that Tisha B'Av in the future is going to be a moed, as the Gemara tells us that in the future Tisha B'Av is actually going to be a holiday. In the same way that Tisha B'Av for us is presently a sad day, and in the future will be a happy day. It brings to mind this idea that in the past we are still, or have been, like the dust to trample upon. And we pray that we will be the dust that arises once and for all in the end of time. With that, I want to wish you a Shabbat Shalom. I can't say a happy nine days, but a successful nine days. A Tisha B'Av that's meaningful. And may we indeed merit celebrating together in Yerushalayim when Tisha B'Av is a Moed. Shabbat Shalom.